quite a few unmanned uh, vehicles uh, at the show, uh, showing the importance of, uh, of these vehicles, both uh, aerial and, in this case, a ground, uh, ground vehicle. And uh, Rheinmetall is presenting one of its uh, latest products in, in this area. Well, uh, this, uh, the UGV that we, uh, we see behind us is now ready for market. It has been in development uh, for almost uh, 18 months now. Uh, so in its basic uh, mule cargo medical evacuation uh, configuration, it's fully uh, tested and ready to be, uh, uh, to be entertained by potential clients. A very unique platform in the fact that uh, it has a very high level of autonomy. Uh, that uh, allows the vehicle to be given a task, not necessarily be radio controlled or driven using a joystick uh, as an example, even though those functions are embedded into the systems. A payload of 600 kilos, an autonomy, uh, usually for while, while supporting uh, dismounted uh, troops of a little bit more than 72 hours with a modular system allowing the system to be even uh, bring to a level of autonomy when it can operate for more than nine days on a single charge with uh, the support of uh, small generators to improve the range and the autonomy of the platform. So. So in this configuration, it looks like it's um, supporting uh, dismounted uh, troops. And uh, from what I understand, it's actually designed to be used with the German IDZ uh, soldier system or the uh, Canadian system. Indeed. So basically, anybody that, is, uh, that has uh, battle management systems, this will be part of the network. It's built for that, for that purpose. So if you're, especially if you're equipped with a, you know, a digitized soldier systems like the Gladius or the Canadian Argus, you can slave the systems with no additional hardware. Basically, this will be seen, if I can use the analogy, like a Bluetooth device with your smartphone, and any soldiers can hook up with this thing and give him a task. Uh, it's very unique in the fact that we're using uh, four radars for navigation purposes, mainly because the vehicle has to be able to navigate uh, terrain and go around obstacles by its own. Uh, so the system is, is, uh, is, uh, is very refined in the way it navigates obstacles. That's why we have put so many uh, LADARS systems on, on it, allowing it to be very, very precise and going through very narrow places and also having the ability on its own to navigate obstacles. We're very unique in that class of, of platform. I understand uh, it can also be armed with uh, missiles or guns. Yeah. Well, it's modular in concept. So basically, where you use the cargo uh, part in the center of the platform, uh, if you remove the cargo, you can use a mission module that could be for surveillance purposes, uh, CBRN purposes, or weaponized platforms. So it can be equipped with anything going from a Navy machine guns, real weapon station, 20 millimeter cannon. It can go also to go with the medium and heavy anti-tank missiles, both Russian type or NATO type. Uh, as long as you stay within a payload of about 600 kilos, which is not that difficult to attain. So the vehicle in this, with that type of payload capability is able to take, as an example, or take to up to four uh, anti-tank missiles, uh, medium range, uh, very easily with the fire control units uh, with no problems. And I understand the Bundeswehr has ordered a couple uh, for what purpose at this point? Well, the Bundeswehr intend to uh, do uh, a rent uh, and trial or a buy and trial uh, late uh, this year, uh, basically uh, inviting three companies to provide systems so they can give it to their, their troops and start articulating their requirements for their program that should come out next year. And uh, I understand uh, that there were trials with a similar system in Canada. Um, is What kind of interest is there in Canada? Well, uh, Canada is a little bit late with regards to considering those type of systems. So uh, same philosophy, basically a buy and try in Canada is also expected within the next uh, few months, where they're going to provide the systems to the infantry school, allowing the infantry school to ar articulate the type of requirements and characteristics they would like in a systems like this, and how practical it is for the concept of operation and the way the Canadian military is fighting and waging his uh, military operations. Uh, but that system could also be used uh, quite, uh, quite well also for disaster relief, uh, for uh, you know, firefighting, uh, forest firefighting type of activities. It has a lot of flexibility and because it's modular in nature, we can build a specific module for a specific task. The philosophy behind articulating the entire system was that uh, having a very solid uh, base systems on which we can build whatever the client or potential clients are looking for.